wrong button. <laughs> oh, this is spooky. Spooky. All right. Welcome, everyone. It's a nice transition out. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Let me tweet about this real quick. Let's see. All right. There we go. Am I on the internet? All right. Looks like I'm on. Um, Hello, my name is Kurt. I'm in Combo Colors. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And uh, today, or tonight, I should say, uh, I'm going to be coloring a page from Nightfall, number one, which is a big horror double feature. 64 pages. <laughs> Uh, two different stories each each uh, each issue. I'm, I'm this is going to be a cool book, guys. I'm I'm warning you now. Sorry, I, I need to rearrange a few things. All right, I can see the chat now. Pre med loner, how are you, man? Good to see you again. Been a while. I can't remember. Are you still pre med? <laughs> are you post med loner now? So um. I put this over here just as sort of, it's not even really reference for the palette, but just sort of the vibe. Because uh, the palette's going to be pretty different. Nurse anesthetist loner. <laughs> I, I hear, uh, and I, I, I surely made this joke last time, uh, but um, I, I got to sit in on a few surgeries uh, when I was in nursing school uh, way back in the day. And... Uh, all anesthetists are a little screwed up. I think I, I think I figured that out. And uh, <laughs> and he said, I, I don't I don't get paid to put people to sleep. I get paid to wake people up. <laughs> and I never forgot that. I'm like, you know what? That works. But no, I have lots of respect for your profession. Thank you for continuing to wake people up. <laughs> You'll fit in perfectly. There, there you go. Oh man. So, uh, but anyway, uh, the palette on this is going to be uh, a little different because uh, this is a flashback. But uh, but the guy over here on the left is the one uh, telling t uh, doing the flashback. So um, they probably they'll, they'll be a little related, maybe. But I don't really need them to. So. And I've been, and, and of course, because this is a new project, uh, if you know me and how I work, that means that I've decided to uh, completely change what I'm doing, what I'm doing, layer styles, brush methods, uh, brushes, uh, and I, I don't know. I think I'm maybe it's the challenge or something. I don't know why I do this to myself, but it's like, why would you ever want to color a, two different books <laughs> with the same, whatever? It's like. Uh, I don't know, make, but I'm having a good time on this book already. And I'm not quite sure. I'm just, it doesn't really matter. Honestly, the way I'm doing this, what I start with too much because I'm going to paint all over it. I think I do want this on the warm side. I think. We'll start there. Yeah, I like accidentally figured that out earlier on this page when I went to I went to change something and like did that and I was like, oh, that looks cooler. What and, you know? So so basically, um, you know, th I'm just changing the canvas color. I I'm leaving the canvas color. I should probably. Uh, it's not really base colors. It should be called canvas. But anyway, that's where we're starting. And uh, if you have questions, comments. Uh, not about the coloring, but <laughs> I mean, uh, not, a, not, no, no back seating. Ask all the questions about the coloring you want. So, 
So I'm going to do a quick sketch here because I really haven't. Uh, so my my theory. So this obviously for the sake of the story and the, the page, this needs to be very bright. And this page, these panels, at least this one will also it'll have a lot of brightness in it. And these TVs, I, I, the TVs need to be a really different, uh, need to be a different color here. Like what's on the TVs, again, like from a story standpoint. And I'm being sort of vague because I don't want to, uh, but I think this will work. Like oranges to yellows. Yeah, we'll just, we'll do this. That's all I needed to see. <laughs> I just needed to see my idea was going to work. Hopefully. So if you're new here, uh, I'll give you a quick rundown on the layers. Everybody's always uh, asking about layers and brushes. And uh, the brushes, most of the brushes I'm using, you're going to see the name right here. So if you like Google that name and Gumroad, you're going to find the brushes. I just bought these watercolor brushes from uh, Krupuk. Krupuk. I don't know how you say this name or if it is a name. Uh, but uh, there's a wash brush that uh does um well it, it does nothing apparently no there we go yeah it's a washy brush that looks uh washy and then there's a blender that uh i really like it does a good job of like not completely destroying the lines underneath uh that's a nice little watercolor blender there i'll be using and then there's just water which I, I need to play with this more, obviously, because I don't uh, actually do a lot of watercoloring. But the water just uh, un unsurprisingly uh, causes this stuff to all run together a little bit. So it's a little bit smoother than the other uh, blender, and it's a little bit of a different effect. So those are the three main brushes I'll be using. I'm, I'm just going to add, just in case you're wondering. Uh, all right, and then the layer stack, uh, this first layer is some text on these signs, which I'm going to leave off for the sake of the stream. Um, inks all on a transparent layer on top. Uh, I made them transparent through the really difficult process in Clip Studio of clicking edit, convert brightness to opacity, or set a button for it. Uh, in Photoshop, that's a good 14 steps. Um, <laughs> then the base colors... Uh, it's just this. That's all it's on there. I'm actually going to be painting on this layer. I'm going to call this paint. And uh, it's mostly going to be on that layer. I might do a few things on top, but I'm really keeping most of this to one layer. And then uh, base colors, we talked about the flats, which you can see are a reference layer. Reference layers uh, in Clip will let me choose those flats without... Uh, actually having to go to the flats which is a massive time saver which i love very much uh these layers oh these layers are uh just for selection purposes they're not even that they're they're not actually accurate at all i'm gonna get rid of those uh my flatter does these sometimes and uh sometimes they're also helpful sometimes they're not and then panels at the bottom again just for easy selections makes sense All right, I'm going to start with the big panel because this I want to be the most impactful. And every lesson I've ever gave you to apply to like a panel or a cover, you can also apply to the page. So when you have a big splashy panel like this, it's the most important panel on the page. I'm going to let it dictate, you know, the color scheme, the layout for the most of this entire section. And then secondarily, We'll make sure these close-ups also stand out far from that. But I want to establish the big scene first. We can worry about the little panels uh, a little bit later. And I'm going to start with that washi brush and get a color. Where do I want to start? I want to start. I want to build this up sort of slowly as if I was doing this traditionally almost. Um, actually, I've got a texture brush that I'm going to throw around here first. 
and I, before you ask i don't i don't know where this came from i think this is the brush that i got from matt wilson that i don't think i'm at liberty to share but if <laughs> but if it's the one i, I may have bought it I, I honestly can't remember i've had it for a long time So just to sort of muddy it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna switch over to just wash and smooth this out a little bit, well, a lot actually through here. Cause this is, in the end, this is gonna be like really bright. And so a lot of this is gonna get blown out. A lot of what I'm doing, I've, uh, you won't, it'll, it'll come through, but it'll come through like very, very subtly. Is that a word? And uh, I'm also, if you think in terms of, hey, Mr. Woods, how's it going? Thank you for your membership. Uh, gold, gold level. There you go. Uh, everything, uh, I forgot what I was going to say just then. But, um, oh, yeah, I, I'm basically thinking, uh, trying to be a human uh, gradient map here. So, like, this dark, whatever color this is, is basically, like, my darkest value at this point. It'll probably be pretty close to the darkest value. And then uh, everything else is going to get lighter. And it's going to sort of take a trip brighter and around this way. So a little, uh, actually, I, I got a color wheel because I'm always doing this analogy anyway. So um, we're starting like here, roughly. Actually, it's not even that saturated, is it? No, it's like here. And then we're going to slide up to like here. And then the brightest values, we're going to pull all the way up here somewhere. That's a very slow brush <laughs> when you do it very fast. But that, that'll be sort of my initial uh, thinking for this panel. So if I need a light value, I'm going here. If I need a mid-tone, I'm going here. And if I need another tone, a darker tone, I'm going to go red. If I need a deeper tone, I'm probably going to go even redder because this is not very red. I have uh, I have leg room for red <laughs> below this. Um, that makes sense, right? All right, I don't need that anymore. This will probably go. This background I will, will probably tweak for like the entire <laughs> for the entire thing. Uh, da, 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 but I want to go ahead and see how uh, I want to establish the background first because I, the way the way I work and if you've been around here a while you know this. Um, I am going to uh, create a pattern here. And uh, of uh, right now, I'm creating a pattern of darkness, and then adding light to break that pattern right around the important edges on the canvas, the important silhouettes, the important shapes, whatever. Um, and then we'll keep doing that smaller and smaller until we finish the whole page. But yeah, it's been a long time since I've done like textury, textury stuff. I want to say maybe like the plot. I did a little. I get a lot of texture in that book, but uh, and I will throw an overlay layer on top of this, and uh, if I need to like intensify something in a lazy way. <laughs> like that. Mostly one layer. <laughs> well, until I need some trickery. And I'm going to try to pick as much as I can uh, from the canvas. Like, once I get, like, 
my whole range of value in here, like these purples and like the well, it's starting to look purple with all this orange. But that reddish color, the orange, the yellow, I'm gonna try to choose those colors as often as I as I can. And that will keep uh that will keep the palette uh limited and, and very clear, easy to read, which is uh well, that's exactly what I want to do for this book. And I love, love working with very limited palettes. It's like my favorite thing. <laughs> it must be my favorite thing. It helps when the lion art has insanely strong shapes and like, I told the editor, I, and I said this yesterday on the stream, but I could spill coffee on this <laughs> and give it back and be like, here, it works. I am, I am, am I still online? Just make sure when the chat stops for too long, I'm always like, "Wait, what? Is, am I am I here?" So I'm gonna head toward blue. This is my my map here. I'm heading toward blue. It doesn't matter that I actually don't get there. I'm heading there. So if I pick a really desaturated red, this actually feels pretty cool because the whole rest of this canvas, you know, I'm here. The rest of the canvas is out here. So there's a lot of difference between that, even though I'm all on the same side of the color wheel. Yes, we are looking cool. All right, cool. Yeah, I think I've I've unintentionally trained my audience to like not chat because they're like, man, every time he reads the chat, he stops. <laughs> and I, and I'm like, oh, well, I can't argue with that <laughs> because I'm because I, you know I can't think and work and talk at the same time or not very well anyway. I'm trying. I'm trying, I've been trying to get better at that. How long have I been streaming now? Three, four years? And I'm also, any chance we get to do anything like really graphic -y and crazy, like, oh, that's not a brush, that's water. Like that, we're gonna try to do it. <laughs> I'm actually gonna. We're going to pump this up even more. On top of the lines. Yeah. There's a perfectly good story reason for that, I promise. <laughs> I'm not doing much, um, what do you call it? Um, I'm not doing much soft stuff on this book. I mean, even like, that's like the biggest gradient I've done, I think. <laughs> I'm not, I, for the line art, it doesn't really, I don't like the way that soft digital looking gradients look on this kind of line art. Um, So we're not going to do it. Very satisfying to watch. We are just mesmerized. <laughs> we don't have a button for that. That's the problem. Click the mesmerize button, please. Uh, right below that like button. <laughs> Mm, I don't like that. I want to make sure that uh, I'm going to follow my own advice that I give often. When you've got a hard line you want to keep, a hard line, a silhouette, don't make the light the same color as <laughs> the background. Because I just basically moved the shape of the line. You know what I mean? The shape of this thing. Because that line is very thin. So let's keep that. And uh, instead, let's not go all the way to yellow. Let's go... What about, what about that? Yeah, that'll work. 
that's dark enough that the bright yellow still seems bright yellow. And I think we're going to do, I need to do the contents of the TV something very distinct. Because it's kind of, it's kind of the point here. <laughs> or what, not, not the point, it's a point. There we go. Oh, snap. I don't know what that was for. Gray is truly a magical color. I am, I am learning that more every day, especially recently. Um... Like, so often, especially uh, in comics, like, and, and I'm guilty as anybody, like, I, we, we tend to think in saturated, or I tend to think in really saturated colors. And, like, that's, there's an entire world of contrast <laughs> between, uh, you know, a saturated color and an unsaturated color that we just don't, oh, I say we, and when I, when I say we, I'm probably talking about myself. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, but when we say, when I say that, I mean that most of the time we, we think in terms of value, you know, and even hue, we think in terms of value and hue, but like saturation is just as powerful of a, of a lever, you know, uh, in your, uh, what am I doing wrong here? <laughs> I'm, I'm, see, I told you guys I'm talking and, and, and that's the problem. Um, but yeah, there there really is a, a, a ton of possibilities with, with saturation levels. Um that is uh, well the problem is the way we look at the color wheel, you know? We we think you know, how many people I talked to a guy yesterday, how many people think of the color wheel as just being a thing that, you know, goes around the outside? Like and uh so I, we're just we're we're terrible at, at color education <laughs> in general I think I'm gonna make I, I want sort of a value that feels darker that's really not that much darker um, so I want to see what like if we flip flop over here to blue Ooh, I like that we're just gonna do all those things blue this is the color I, I'm pre-spreading the blue around for because I got to use that somewhere else. I'll probably use it on the character in the front a little bit. Uh, are you informed about the story prior to receiving the art to color? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. If uh, if you're not getting a script. With your pages, uh, one something is wrong. Two, ask for it. <laughs> you should. You can't color without a script. I mean, you can. You just can't do it well, or as well as you could. I guess you guys saw um, yesterday, I think it was, right after, uh, like a couple of hours after I did that, well, maybe it was, it was a day or two, I guess, after the stream where I talked about uh, Mid Journey. And uh, apparently we there's all there's already been a, like a newspaper, pretty big one, that's uh, like credited mid, credited Mid Journey with a really hastily thrown together ugly <laughs> drawing uh like well i guess if it's almost free then uh you know maybe you uh maybe you you, you lose some standards or something possibly like that's not good all right so this is going to be very light and how different can so like maximum difference from what's on the page would be blue 
everything else is either going around the warm direction and less powerful or going around the cool direction. Actually, the greens. Ooh, that green. Ooh, that green. This is the professional way to do this, is you, you put a color in and then you go, which one is it? Is it <laughs> along this bar? Yeah, I like that green. We can throw some blue in there anyway and, and add a little oomph. Hello, uh, Paula, how's it going? So here's what's happening right now. If you're just joining us. So this color that's in the, this red color, it's over here is, uh, where is it at? Middle of red value and saturation. So it's like right about there. And then we added a little bit of, uh, we needed some highlights. I didn't want to go toward purple or blue. I, I wanted it to match the lighting in the background, but I didn't want to go all the way to yellow because that would be too much. So we went a little bit over here to orange. And so you think about, think about a little, uh, a little rubber band that I have pulled over here, a rubber band of tension, uh, AKA contrast. All right. And then on the, uh, on the TV, well, I really want that to stand out strongly on this canvas. So if I pick any colors around here, I, I I'm not stretching the rubber band very far, right? It's not really doing, going to do much for me. Now, if I go out here, now we're getting somewhere. That's a really different color. And that is about what we are, where we're at. Am I right? <laughs> Let's see. That is, yeah, it's a really desaturated yellow. And it appears green. And now this line of tension goes all the way out to here. So if my, that area of the canvas all lives in this range then this is adding quite a bit of tension to my rubber band of contrast, right? Why does it look green? Because we're headed that way, all right? We're not there all the way. We don't need to be. Your brain is very smart at figuring out what direction the color is going. I learned that from Marco Bucci. <laughs> he, we, read, we read the direction without even thinking about it. So we look at that and go, oh, that's greenish. Well, yeah, but we're passing through here on the way to green. Does that make sense? And now, because I want these things to come forward even more, I'm grabbing a blue color that's not even that blue, but it's a really desaturated green, which is way over here, right about there. So we're pulling this rubber band, we're making a loop here, and it's going even further out that way. Does, does the rubber band analogy work? <laughs> does, does that make sense? <laughs> I've been trying to explain this poorly for like two years now. <laughs> what color was I? That's yeah, pretty close. Still not blue enough though. And I, I, don't, I don't want this to get too bright because I, I, I want to make this even brighter. And so I'm not, I'm not going full on uh, brightness here yet. This is even this is like creating a relative midtone. I like these brushes a lot. Like all that you're seeing is basically one brush stroke that <laughs> I'm just blending around back and forth. And then I want to push this a little bit more and I'm going to get like halfway to white and shift this even further around toward blue. And just a dab, just a dab, just a little dab of white. 
I was sorry. I watched a lot of Bob Ross as a kid. And then uh, I think I want to change the color of the lines on these things. So I'm going to put a clipping mask on that and select what's inside the TV. Oh, thank you, uh, Aqua Cthulhu, for uh, uh, welcome back as a member, actually. Where's everybody from in your neck of the woods? That doesn't make sense. Where is your neck of the woods? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go about there and we can lean it green. We can like flip back around to the red, but I don't know if we like that or not. I don't think I do. I think that works. And on all these TVs and uh, whatever this equipment is, <laughs> uh, I'm going to switch to a uh, pencil, actually. And uh, that's not it. And I just want to add a little bit of something. A little bit of detail here. Just to dress up these TVs very, very slightly. And like randomly put them in a few places like like the vent there is you know not perfect I've never mentioned it, but I'm from India. Just woke up. Oh, okay, cool. Well, uh, welcome. What time is it uh, in India? My, I've got a pretty sizable viewership in India. It's almost like there's a lot of people that live there. <laughs> Hello, uh, Kurt from Texas, currently viewing in Japan. I like why sometimes when I just want to chill out at night and put on some music and I'm like reading a book or, or, or playing on my iPad or whatever, uh, I will uh, find one of those like walking tours of, of Japan and like, like Tokyo or something. And, uh, it's just interesting. It really, to me, as someone from the Deep South, it feels like a, a different planet. I don't mean that in a bad way. Like, it's fascinating to me. Like, everything about a city that size feels 
really, really different. <laughs> I also realize I badly miss just drawing like or painting or whatever, like without um, worrying about selections and layers and all that stuff quite as much. Eight thirty. Nice. Oh, you came across a few. They must be pretty popular. Uh, I mean, some of the ones I've seen have they have lots and lots of views. Uh, that's one of those like low, what do you call it, low barriers to to entry kind of channels. Like if you got a camera and can uh, move, <laughs> you can you can get around. You can make a YouTube channel. Oh, I just saw all these little lights and stuff over there. Uh, let me do that after I do this. Like, I've, I've, there's so much just tech. I miss that there were light bulbs we can do. And we'll make them look like they're very special effecty. Is that a word? Now, uh, if I leave this color on the figure as like the brightest color, then it kind of blends in with the TVs. And I want that, the silhouette of the patient is very important. So I'm gonna go to a brighter value, one that I've already got on my canvas here, and start putting that in. Uh, on uh, probably even go a little bit brighter just near the on the head the head end <laughs> actually do I have anything any brighter than that I guess I have that And as we kind of drift down this way, I'm not going to use quite as much of that light color. But now that the patient is a little bit lighter, I think I want to uh, and decide how bright I want to make that. I'm probably going to add a little bit of a little more bright color to this guy. Not a lot, but just enough to... Uh, Bring him forward slightly. pretty sure this is meant to be a light. I'm going to do it as a light. And again, I'll do some special effects on that uh, a little bit later. 
make it look like it's glowing a little bit above the lines. And actually, I think, let's see, do I want to, I want to see what that looks like in uh, blue. It makes a lot more sense for that to be blue. It might make sense, story-wise, a little bit more. I'll come back to that. I reserve the right. <laughs> I reserve the right to change that later. I know these handles very well. Looks just like the ones the hospital I used to work at looks like. I'm adding it just on the top of this to sort of make it look like it's uh, got that bevel in it that it has. Is that the term, bevel? I think it is. It's got a bit of a edge on it. And the, and the lines, I'm also trying to keep these pretty like organic, or not like non-organic. Uh, just because it's meant to be plastic versus like the sheet, so like the sheet's a little bit rougher. And what's the reddest thing I've got? That. Really not that red, is it? Uh, my artist makes the horror pages of our book watercolor as well. That's awesome. I learned how to flat by watching your channel. Oh, that's awesome. I hope to goodness there are no bad habits in that flatting video <laughs> because my, there's a whole generation of flatters I think that learned from that video. So uh, I've always been paranoid. I'm like, oh man, I hope I didn't do something stupid in there. Very atmospheric panel. Yeah, it is. Like even bef before I before I got my hands on it, <laughs> uh, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna duplicate this into a new window and put it over here. And if I put it any lower, it's kind of in the way of the camera, so I'll put it up there. Oh, I wish Clip wouldn't do that. <laughs> when you, I think this Photoshop might do that too. I use yours and uh, Jason Brubaker's techniques. Yeah, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Do I want... I'm just going to try something real quick. Like, do I want this to be a different color? Or do I, I think it needs to be a different color because if I do it the same color as the TVs, it's going to appear to be on the same plane as the TVs and it's not. So maybe we lean, no, we don't want to go purple, blue's too much. I wish one, I think we want to go like there ish. I'll probably change my mind a couple times, but close enough. 
close enough for now. It'll be easy to change if I want to change it. I just go down to this layer and change it. Actually, I need that color. Will you ever do an updated video? I don't know. Is there, is there anything that needs to be updated in that video? Like so it's, I, my, my process is still, you know, pretty much exactly the same unless, uh, you know, there's been some crazy improvement in flatting technology that I was not aware of. <laughs> I probably should. I mean, just as a presentation of the video, I probably should. Most of the channels I follow, it, it, it amazes me how often they repeat themselves. Like, and I've, I've never really wanted to do that, but I, I guess when you've been on as long as I have, it's okay. Maybe. I'll probably do I wanna uh, I knew I would I knew I would change my mind on this color about 40 times before I'm done with this video <laughs> It's like it needs to be different, but not too different. <laughs> yeah, this is the machine that's making this run. So, you know, if I color code it similarly to the TVs, I'm hoping your subconscious absorbs that, you know, I mean, obviously they're all in the same room, but it's, it's, it's subtle. Might, might be too subtle, but I think about it. Uh, how are you tonight? Uh, <laughs> the gerbils protect what? <laughs> Th thank you, thank you. Oh, the way you said that, I thought you may have had reservations. No, no, I said I hope. I said I hope I don't have any bad habits in that video. <laughs> not, not that I do. I don't think I do. Why is your room not illuminated? Because for me, it's 10 p.m., 10.30 at night almost. And uh, that light is very bright. I'm not really in the mood for uh, that bright light at the moment. I feel like these things should maybe be a different color. Not these, not those. I'm looking for stuff that looks like it might be lights. Uh, we're going to say all that stuff looks like lights. And, whoops, I got something else selected here, don't I? Oh, these things up here. And not over there. I 
I'm thinking red would be perfect. It's close enough to this slightly desaturated version. And it's really small, so it can stand out a little bit. <laughs> uh, imagine a character in a horror movie that cannot die or be injured. And the... I, <laughs> I appreciate the, the comments, Redacted Computer. I know you've watched quite a bit. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> All right. What else on this panel? All right, let's go ahead and do, uh, we're going to pick something about that color. And make this glow like a little crazy, like there's something wrong with these bulbs. Wanted to say you're a true talent. Have a great night. I appreciate that, Michael. Thank you very much. I don't know what I want here. I'm trying to get it out. Having already painted some of that. I want these glows to be very, very subtle. Like I said, I don't want to do a lot of soft, glowy stuff on this. So I messed it up with some textures first. And... I'm liking this panel where it's going. I think it's... It's, it's way different from this, the other. I really just want to make sure that the... Uh, this clearly reads as a flashback. <laughs> that's that's the goal. And I'm just going to do some textury stuff to kind of blend that down a little bit. Do I want that on this with that big splash page? That white might actually be too much on this. I usually have very strong feelings about gutters being uh, white, but not when that's the only gutter on the page. <laughs> I might change my mind about that. We'll see. Probably not. All right, so now. Doo, 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 doo. I'm going to go ahead and do this panel also. We'll come back and do the top panels. It's turning out awesome. I never thought of the texture glows, but it looks more organic. Yeah, it definitely it does. Um, if especially on this kind of line art like i don't know I, it's hard to, to quantify what that is like the heavy blacks the texture like there's a lot of texture in it so like i don't want to mess up you know the subtleties in the inks by throwing like a big digital looking soft airbrush over the top you know like it really looks funny to me so um yeah, all the glows in this book are weird like that. Uh, on this panel, this is a... It's the same... The same uh, flashback, but a different time. A different, slightly different thing. So, 
I want to keep it close to uh, close to those colors, but not too close. I might use some of those colors, like the orange. The orange would actually, I think, be a yeah. We can do. We can make this work. All right. So, I want to select uh, all this stuff, and I'm going down to my base layer, which has nothing on it except this. And uh, I'm just, you know what I'm realizing before I do that? I want to pull a little bit of this red back on top of this thing. I don't want it to be too, like, cleanly green. I want to have a little bit of red in there just to, like, mess it up. Because there's nothing like on this whole image that's extremely, uh, what do you call it? Like flat. It's all pretty textured. So if you've got one thing that's not textured, guess what? <laughs> it's going to come forward a little bit more than you might want. wondering if these TVs I'm gonna try something that might not stick around if I desaturate the yeah I like that not that's so interesting so like this whole canvas is very 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 warm except for the blue light if I desaturate the red on the TV you see how it's cooling off it's starting to appear to be cooler well, it's just because the, the red is now almost gray. And like I said earlier, that's we're on the way to blue. And so that gives me a little bit of separation between the, uh, the bed and the TVs. Now we can come back down here figure out what I was doing so I think I want to reuse the orange in this in this part of the flashback for the sky or no actually let me just let me try something I don't know If it was, if I use the same orange, it might appear too much to be like it's a part of panel one, and I don't really want that. So what if we go, let's invert that and just look at the sky. So I'm gonna dirty up a little bit with texture brush. And then switch to like a wash, smooth out some of this. But yeah, I think if I keep that little bit of that red in the background and move the orange to the characters, then I think that'll work. When it comes to rendering matte surfaces versus metallic surfaces, is it easier to do in comic book form than it is in illustration? Uh, I mean, a lot of times in comics, you're like you're doing things that like hint at that it's it's uh, not all the time, but often you're like you're doing things that hint at it being, you know, metallic. It's not like you have to like render out, you know, an incredible amount of texture. You know what I mean? Um, I don't 
like the orange. You know what? I'll use the orange on the guy. That's what it is. That's what it is. I'll use the orange on the uh, dock in the middle. That way, it'll it'll set off nicely against all this other orange. Hopefully, I think it will. I know I'm putting all this texture in and then like blowing out most of it, but it's it's uh, it's subtle. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking. Dark purple is hard to do. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to put it in CMYK mode. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. That should work. This will get tweaked in to death in Photoshop anyway. <laughs> Actually, it probably won't. Mm -hmm. Too much texture. That text that brush is so random. A little too too random sometimes that's why i end up like not using what it gives me very often i put it down and then like blend it and do all kind of stuff to it because it's just too much so i'm brightening the area right around all these silhouettes so that they come forward with a focus kind of in the middle the only reason and i, I still might not I still might not keep this purple. I think it's it, it might be a little... My instinct is that it's a little off. It doesn't look bad. Actually, since I've dark... Since I brightened the background, I bet I can... Shift that a little bit toward... Hmm, man. This is the high conflict scene. Do we do we do something like You see the pushing and pulling happening here? <laughs> this is the problem solving aspect of of coloring. It's trying to figure out how to get everything reverberating off where I want it to reverberate. And these all need to be light. And I want to soften this effect uh, around the uh, around the edges, not quite as uh, bright. Don't know if I want to use that orange though. Tell you what, I'm going to do this on a different layer. And then dial this in where I want it. The orange is not bad, but it's not right. Like, I want these signs to stand out, but not that much. I'm overthinking this a little bit. It needs to be less saturated. And yeah, a little bit of red, that works. It's just the value is what I'm looking for. It needs to be brighter. And I'm gonna darken this one that's overlapping here a little bit. So that it's not coming quite so far forward.
the color of that gutter is going to bug me. <laughs> Got to figure out what color it needs to be. Maybe that's it. Have you watched X-Men by Pete Holmes? I don't think I have. I don't really like Pete Holmes, <laughs> personally. His style of comedy, I guess, usually. I'm going to go ahead and merge this down, get back on one layer before I forget about it. <laughs> and Yeah, if I go too green, he's too close to the signs. I think I was right the first time. I think I'm going to stick it stick with the orange. and then go with just a little bit of brighter color at the top, which is very subtle. How's everybody doing? Y'all good? I keep going back and forth. I think that was the problem. Lighter orange. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There's a better value shift there too. All right, so we got some close-up eyeballs. Looking crazy. Sorry, this nose is bugging me. What layer are we on? Oh, there we go. Making sure. I'm just softening that a little bit. There we go. All right. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I want to do a little splash of white around this. Or not white, but my our version of the lightest value we have <laughs> we're using here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to leave that purple, I think, for his, quote unquote, his base skin tone. Because I'm probably going to blow all of this out with like a special effect on top anyway. Maybe not, well, maybe not, I don't know, I'll figure it, <laughs> figure something out. Uh, 
I think we just go really bright. And then let's go even brighter with a brush that's not too nuts. And now I'm going to get really close to this because these panel lines are so tiny. <laughs> and uh, get all the way over here. I just want to pick the inside of the... Uh, the inside of the panel. And if I just chose the flats, it wouldn't work that way. Whoops. And the screen mode, I believe. Will give me what I want here. And I, I'm using a gradient here or a soft brush because it's a special effect. So I don't really mind it. Does being in a super dark room <laughs> help when you're working on a horror comic? Uh, maybe, maybe so. No, nah, I don't know. I just, I didn't want to turn the light on in here. It's just too bright for this time of the evening. To, for my taste, anyway. I don't know if I want to do a ton of rendering on this. It would just be completely blown out. And I might even want to go brighter. Let me see what this looks like. Do, 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 do. No, I'm not going to go brighter on that. I'm going to go brighter on the highlights. That's what we're going to do. Whoops. How about under the lines? So I've been watching uh, a lot of Westworld lately. And I want I want Bernard's glasses, right? I'm afraid to look them up. Somebody's going to do it now that I've said that. But I'm, I'm fairly certain they're probably like three jillion dollar glasses because it's an HBO show. <laughs> they have a big budget. We have a very we have very similar beards too. We've got that going for us. I'm kind of uh, trying to predict where these uh, glass frames would, how they would be sculpted a little bit here. And now we have these pretty eyes. And I'm going to go like uh, kind of broadly first, throw in a few.
colors around here. And then I'm just going to pressure should yeah go a little bit harder on the pressure this brush is really good with pressure sensitivity I, I I'm, I'm not good enough with like brush making to know like what to fiddle with to get these things to do what I want them to do <laughs> there's there's very few things that I know about the brush engine in Photoshop or in Clip Studio Usually I'll buy a brush pack, it'll have a million brushes in it, and I'll find like the three that I want to use, and I'll never touch the rest of them again. <laughs> I'm like, they could be great, but I'm like, this one? No. This one? No. This one? Ooh. You know. There's my list. My secret. Anyone uh, check out the AI style to paint? Had fun playing around it. It could be a neat flatting tool in the future. I hadn't heard of that one. But I'm not necessarily. I'm. I'm not. I'm not as in the loop on all that stuff as my last video made it out to be. I don't know. I don't think that's what I want there. I think it needs to be yellow. Yeah. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of this orange and overlay mode to like tint these edges a little bit without affecting the values very much. Is Photoshop much better than Procreate? Um, I don't use and that. This it's a it's kind of like asking is. You know, I'm trying I'm trying not to be offensive to either program. But I those are tough to compare. <laughs> I mean, better in what way? I mean, Photoshop does nine jillion things that I don't use it for, but it'll do whatever you want. Um, you know, Procreate has like four tools. <laughs> so it's it's a kind of a different different philosophy here. Uh, so yeah, it, it really just depends on what you're looking for. This is Clip Studio. Um, it looks a lot like Photoshop, but it's Clip Studio. I probably should have done this earlier. Could I have shrunk that by like two pixels and avoided that selection? Yeah. <laughs> that works. It's too pretty. I mean, I like the color, but I'm going to dirty it up. Use a texture instead. It was like too smooth, <laughs> you know.
and maybe this stuff needs uh maybe we do a light effect over the whole thing i, I don't i don't know let's see you won't know until you try stepped all over the lines but I kind of kind of like it I don't know how well it fits in the rest of the page though yeah I don't really like that Pass my finals because of your tutorials and demos. Thank you. Really? What's your uh what's your major? What are you uh what are you in school for? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love it. I've I've heard that a handful of times over the years that like, oh man, you helped me with my whatever, you know school thing or or so yeah that's pretty awesome and also where are you from if you don't mind you don't have to say the school but like you know rough estimate <laughs> where you are I'm just curious all right do I have what do I think so multimedia arts from the Philippines so what are, what are you interested in doing with that what's what so I, what are you, what sort of job are you looking for I want to get the uh, the value shift between this panel. Why is that not working? Uh, is that not working? What am I doing wrong? Because I want a blender brush. There we go. This edge. Uh, well, really, even more specifically, right here. Uh, that purple and that orange are really close together. And so... Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of a darker color. Whoops. Darker, I said. trying to decide I think I want to do a very 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 subtle glow under this one there's more glow layers than rendering layers on this <laughs> whoa no maybe that needs to be I want to get under that How, can I get under that Mm, what am I doing wrong? Oh, that's going to darken too. There we go. Just paint it around the side. Not that brush. There we go. I just want to make it look a little bit like it's coming outside of that black because if it's really that 
bright, then it would, uh, you know, we would we would overexpose a little bit uh, along this edge. Now that also messed up the inside, so I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna blend that away, hopefully, yeah. I only want this affecting the outside, not the inside. So I'm just pushing that little line that I made there out of the way. Have you ever had a project where it's just too disturbing to work on because of how gory it is or how used or are you used to it by now? One time, one time in my life, uh, very, very early on in my career, I wasn't even like, nobody knew who, what, who the hell I was. And, uh, <laughs> It was, I'm not even going to say what medical condition was used uh, as a story point that's just incredibly, incredibly nasty. Okay. And, like, I had, as a nurse, had, like, dealt with people with this very bad condition and I just could not find the comedy or the drama or whatever it is that they uh, that they found in it and uh, and also I, I just think it was a bad idea like it, I just don't uh, sorry I'm darkening his glasses a little bit underneath what I did earlier You couldn't see the frames very well. Um, but yeah, I basically was like, I got this, I got like a page done, maybe like one page done. Cause I don't, I probably didn't read the entire script, you know, as I was literally at my first or second job ever. So I was like, Oh, I'll read the script as I go. <laughs> and I get to the page where this particular thing shows up and I'm like, you're kidding. Like, nah, man, like I'm out. <laughs> I'm not your guy. And, uh, oh, they were mad. They got mad at me. They got so mad at me. I'm like, which I ought to tell you right there, this is not healthy uh, situation going on here. But, yeah, so one time, one time I did, I drew the line on something. <laughs> None of my brushes are doing what I want them to do right now. Let's see. That's what I want to do. Not that bright. I just want to dirty up that a little bit more. Whoops. This brush is like too random for me to use. I should use something else. This brush is much, much more. There we go. Again, I just, I just want a really, really clear... Uh, edge on that panel so it doesn't look like everything else Well, this is close. This is really close to being done. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? I'm going to dirty up this TV a little bit more again, or not. Well, just a little bit of detail. Separate TVs slightly. I'm trying to decide if I like the color on the TVs or if I want to go like a 
a little bit bluer. Or brighter. And that is a little bit better. The only problem now is the color of the TVs, I think, are a little too close to the color of the sky down here. Uh, let me shift this back around to green ish. I'll tell you what, let's get rid of that. Actually, I think I like where it was. What I'm wondering, though, is instead of... Let me, give me a second here. Yeah, a little bit further away from the, from the blue at the bottom. And maybe it's the, sorry, you guys are hearing like just my stream of consciousness at the moment. Um, <laughs> I, I'm trying to figure out uh, what color I want to make these guys in the TV. I don't think I even changed it much. They all feel a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, I think I liked them where they were. Too much of a shock value thing? Uh, no, I mean, it wasn't... I don't know if that was their intention. It was just... I don't know, man. If if I if I told you what the condition was, you would understand. That's how bad it was. Like I'm not gonna say it, but it was it was something incredibly incredibly horrible that ha can happen to people, and it's extremely gross. And the way that it happened in this book was just horrible. <laughs> and I just uh, I, I'm not, I mean there's. You know, I'm not opposed to, like, gross horror, like, obviously. Like, this book uh, gets pretty nasty, but it's nothing, nothing at all, like, that's, like, too close to home, like, medical-wise. It's very outlandish stuff. Uh, Yeah, now I'm trying to get that bottom panel away from the TVs. Because I really don't want that to read as... As quite as closely connected as they are right now. But that gets us pretty close. The only other thing I'm curious about is... What would some of these uh, lines in the background look like if they were a different color? Slightly, slightly, maybe. Like, not a lot, just like a little. Nope, that's too soft. Let me get another brush. I don't want to, I don't want like a straight up gradient. can actually get a little separation with the background on this panel. I'm going to have to lighten that, I think, in between those two panels. And I'm going to need to shift the corner of panel two again, I think. But I do like how this looks. And 
And if it gets too heavy anywhere, the transition's too hard, I can smooth it out with this water brush. And right through where? Through here? I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. If I get a brush that has something other than water on it, Let's see, can I just shift this away? Red, just cool it off a little bit. You're a wizard. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, now we're in that uh, mode of the evening or the page where uh, we just stare at it. <laughs> um, maybe we do a little bit of subtle bursty stuff coming out this way a little bit I need a brush that has does this one get smaller hold on You know what? I'm going to do this on a different layer because I don't trust myself. <laughs> oh, crap. I know what I want. Let's see if I can get it to happen. Oh, I don't have a selection. That's why that's painting everywhere. I'm like, why is that going over? Why is the software doing what I'm asking it to do? It's crazy. Yeah, I'm going to like overdo this and then we're going to dial it back, I think. Or, hold on, what do I want to do here? I want to do something here. Let's go out this way. Oh, you know, I know what's happening. I know what's happening. Well, I'm like, why is these colors not mixing right? There's an overlay layer on top that's affecting all of it. <laughs> so I'm going to turn that off for a second. It's like, why is it doing that? Um, because I told it to. So now I'm getting what I expected. <laughs> I was like, why is it doing that? Like I said, I'm probably gonna overdo this and then dial it back with a mask or something. Actually, let's see, these colors. All right, now what does it look like? Lovely. Oh, that brush is wet, so it's dragging across. Let's do, not do that. All right. 
Much better, much better. This is a real life thing. Nope, this is uh this is fiction. <laughs> yeah, I am a figment of your imagination. None of this is real. This is not live. <laughs> Sorry, it is live. Somebody watching is like, wait, what? No, I'm kidding. This is live. I think this page is sufficiently disturbing. All right. So do I have anything else to work on? I might be waiting on flats right now. Oh, I do have one more page. How long have I been on? I'm going to try to go about two hours. We're probably getting, yeah, we're pretty close. Tell you what, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna run, take a quick break, very short, refill my water, come back, and then uh, I'll start another one. But we won't finish it. Not even close. Sorry, I'm gonna start another one. We won't finish it. But uh, what's the very next page? What is that? Eight, nine. Yeah. So yeah, I will. Uh, I will be right back. Love this page. It looks so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just realizing, having put that BRB on there, that I have quite a bit of headroom <laughs> to go a lot brighter there. Um, so we're going to do that real quick. Uh, yeah. Little splash around the character's head we want you to see there. And then just like creeping around this TV. And a little bit at the foot of the bed, maybe. I like it. I like it. All right. Let's see. Don't forget to save. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriel. That's something I don't think I will ever have to worry about forgetting again. Uh, all right. So let me grab another page. This one is much calmer. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I have a new action. So, this is the kind of stuff I get excited about. Sorry. 
And maybe if you're watching this at <laughs> this time of the evening, or if you're watching this, maybe you'll get excited about it too. But so very consistently, uh, what my flatter does, would, well, because I've asked him to do it, is, uh, is they just, uh, they set the inks to multiply mode uh, and they set up a few other layers here. Uh, and every single page, I make a new base layer. I set it to like a gray color. I set the inks to normal and put them on a transparent layer set the flats to a reference layer on every single page. So now if I select the flats and click this action, it does all of it for me. <laughs> so I've saved myself so many clicks. So I've got a normal mode inks on a transparent layer with a base color named base with that blue on it that I like to use. And then the flats as a reference layer. It's like magic. All right. Uh, could I request a brief explanation on what you call vibration? Yes. Have you watched Marco Bucci's video on this? It's probably a better explanation than mine. Um, so vibrations. Think about uh, if we relate this to the color wheel. Um and the rubber band analogy that I like so much, or the bungee cord analogy <laughs> that I like so much. So like if I pick two, so imagine the colors that I'm choosing as I'm putting a little stake on the color wheel and I'm gonna, and any color that I choose, the next color I choose, wherever that is, I want you to imagine a little rubber band wrapping around those two. And that's how much tension those two colors have, right? Now, you can have low tension or you can have high tension. So like the difference in these two, if I pick this orange, let me get a, I don't know what it is about airbrushes today, but uh, if I pick that orange and then pick like that red, like those colors are, uh, they're not very far apart from each other. And so they don't have a lot of tension. There's not a lot of contrast. They don't really do anything too amazing on their own. But, um, uh, if I were to go way across the color wheel somewhere else, and it could be up here, it could be down here, it could be wherever, just far away from here, uh, that is going to, you know, it's gonna be very different from everything else on the canvas, all right? So like that green really stands out against both of those because the tension to it is much higher than in the orange and red, okay? You can imagine um, analogous color schemes, for example. Let's say, uh, I know we love our, our uh, we love our, uh, our names for palettes, right? Analogous is, is a fancy word for, they're all close together. <laughs> Don't overcomplicate it. So like an analogous scheme is a very low tension scheme. Like, you know, we're all kind of right here. And then a, I'm, I'm getting to vibration. Uh, <laughs> if you're like, wait, I asked about vibration. You've did this before. Uh, and by the same token though, like if I picked a bunch of oranges and reds and then added, you know, a bunch of stuff from the other side of the color wheel, uh, that's a pretty, you know, that's a pretty big intense uh, palette because they're all well away from each other. They're all very saturated. They're all very far apart. So, Vibration is when you have two colors that are basically resonating against each other uh, is, a, is not a good word to put it. If you know anything about frequencies, what's a good example of this? Uh, this might not be the best example, but you know how on like a trampoline you get two people going at the same time and one person like jumps just right and the other person like flies up, you know? Like there's a, like the power comes from the force of, of, of those things hitting very close to the same time, but not quite the same time. And so there's extra power comes from that subtle difference in the two frequencies. And so colors that are really far apart. And I would say, I tend to think of it in terms of lots of saturation. But like, I'm trying to think of two colors that would, 
vibrate really hard. I, I'll show you one from an, a page I did earlier. Uh, bu -bu where is it at? You guys all forget you saw all of this <laughs> after today. All right, close your eyes. Um, I would say like these oranges are vibrating against these purples because they're on opposite sides of the color wheel. One's over here and one's way over here. And they're, we're going back and forth between the two. You know, we're going purple, orange, purple, orange, purple, orange, like all through here. They're very close to each other. Um, they, 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 they're, they create a pattern that's very close to each other. So like anytime you just have colors that are a little bit or a lot different from everything else on the canvas, they have a very high like vibration, I would say. Um, you can think of it as like, uh, surely I can come up with something here. If I got like a purple or a yellow and yeah, like a purple, it's really saturated. Like I would say like this yellow has a very, or this yellow and purple together, I guess, technically have like a lot of vibration with each other. Like it's almost hard to look at, <laughs> you know, if you get close, it's like, wait, back up, you know, because they're so far apart, but the pattern they're creating, you're getting almost like a checkerboard effect of going from yellow to purple, yellow to purple, yellow to purple, yellow to purple, as opposed to like big chunky blocks of it, which, still might vibrate some, uh, but you don't get the same effect because they're both just big fields of color. But if I started like, you know, trypophobics, be, watch out. Uh, if I start doing like this, then you start to sort of feel that vibration. That when I say vibration, this is what I'm talking about, is this sort of like super intense, um, very unnatural often, I would say, uh, sort of feel, you know, for your colors. I would say that is vibration. Um, there's a bit of, uh, yeah, that's the best analogy I can, that's the best I can do on the fly. <laughs> if I come up with a better, uh, a better, uh, what do you call it? A better explanation. I'll let you know. <laughs> Oh, hey, Tiago. How's it going? Welcome. Good to see you. The resonant frequencies. Yeah, yeah. It's the same principle. It's like, like if, um, like I've been using like resonant frequencies, uh, of my own, like in my, like, when I get a massage, like I, I've got a craniosacral massage therapist. It's amazing. And, uh, we've figured out that like, a lot of the tension that's wrapped up in like my solar plexus and throat and this whole area. If I like, I'm going to back off the mic here and do like, like a very, very low, like almost a growl. It's like where it just, it's literally shaking your larynx. Like it almost, for me, it like, it shakes some things loose <laughs> when I, when I've got problems there. So it's like the same principles. You can imagine it, between two different colors that uh, that just seem to have energy between each other, you know, and and it and it literally it, it, so much. If you watched caveman color theory videos of mine, you, you understand this. Or if even if you watched the Mid Journey video recently, like if you're not if you haven't seen those, if you think of contrast as a measure of distance, it just it it makes a lot of this stuff much simpler. Because you can think about any color concept in those terms, literally anything. It's like a complementary scheme is just a very, you know, high distance, you know, scheme. Um, a, I mean, you can have a, a complementary scheme that has low uh, tension. Like if I pick this yellow and that purple, whoops, that purple, you know, they don't really do much because the tension is low. You know, the tension of that band around those two colors, if you can think about it that way, 
is not very much. But if I take that rubber band and stretch it all the way up to here and keep the purple exactly where it is, well now, if I can get the color picker to work, then now I've got a color that really jumps off the page because the value is much higher and the distance from that, uh, from that purple is much greater. But that works both ways. Like we, we could have an entire, everything that I'm saying, you could flip it and we could still apply it. So like if this is my background and I choose a desaturated purple, that's also going to come forward, you know, against that yellow, you know? So it, it works, it works both ways. But that, that's, that's the logic behind almost every decision that I'm making here is I want the background, we'll use this as an example, and then I'll get off my soapbox. But looking at the background on this one panel, in its entirety, it lives from, you know, a relatively uh, saturated reddish color and it dips through the oranges and goes across here into the yellows. And that yellow is not even that saturated, but yeah, it's more, it's right around there. So like the whole background sort of fits in this kind of, you know, in that rubber band. So if I want to break that pattern and have something stand out against that, well, if I use any colors inside of here, it's not going to be very much contrast. It's not going to be very much distance. It's not going to create a lot of focus. But if I dip down to like, like this is a much darker red, which I can't really, we don't have value on this, but, but I'm breaking that pattern by choosing colors that are outside of that. And that's creating, you know, now this rubber band has been stretched even further. And so you can see that in effect on like the, the face here and on the bed and on this guy. And then within that, I've got the the TVs that need to come forward. And they also need to, they're important story-wise. So I really want them to stand out. So I could have chose any color in here and they would not have stood out as much as just getting outside of that area. So if I put my TVs out here, it's different from everything else on the canvas. So anyway, and you can think of vibration to go back to your question there as the rubber band is basically, you know, <laughs> it's doing this, you know, within a small space, you know, or it's doing this within a pretty small space, you know, that's what I would call vibration. That makes sense. <laughs> Are you writing this down? Oh, uh, check the description, by the way, if you're new here. I've got links to my courses and uh, click buttons. Click a button. Click any button you see. <laughs> Unless it's someone else's video. Don't click those buttons. The rubber band analogy is really easy to grasp and works for me. It works for me. <laughs> so, uh... This scene we've already established, uh, I've already established a color palette for here. Um, and so I'm going to grab as many colors as I can off of this. Um, is there any, yeah, they're pretty much all right there. Excuse me. And this being a very different scene, again, just to explain what I'm about to get into, um, on the deep end of the spectrum, there's my shadow color right around there. Our mid-tones headed up this way. Sorry, you can't see it when I put the color down. And so again, like the vast, vast majority of the background is right here. Now, as I get closer to the character, and again, you could flip-flop all these values, do the character light, the background dark, if it fits your scheme. This is just how this page is going. So as I move closer to my focal point, you know, the thing that I'm... Why is this not undoing? There we go. 
you'll see that I'm drifting toward like this bright teal, which is about right here. So I'm starting here. Well, now I'm stretching that rubber band around there as we're getting closer. And then as we get right on top of the people in this panel, I because it's so small, we go all the way to yellow. Or actually, it's a really, really bright, bright green right about there. So I've established, here's my pattern. Look at where I broke the pattern, way out here. That's a long way from the rest of this panel. So that's why, even though his character is very small in this panel, he still comes forward because I'm stretching out that color all the way out to here. Now in this panel, to make my own point here, <laughs> we've got the same background colors but instead of going up to yellow, I'm going all the way down to this mid-tone purple over here because he's much bigger in the panel. I don't need to have like a, a ton of contrast going somewhere else to like make sure he shows up. He's right in the middle of the panel. There's nothing around him, <laughs> you know? So, uh, and then, you know, we can see we're kind of drifting towards some desaturated blues on his highlights. So the, the highlights on him are actually moving toward the center. You guys aren't saying much. So I don't know if this it makes sense or if I've lost you all, <laughs> but I, I hope that's clear. Okay, so big open panel and all the details on the right side. So on that one, two, I guess it's technically panel three. So I definitely want, I know we'd need this to be white, at least to start. I will probably drift some color into this background but I will end it, or it'll be, uh, we'll drift color like across this way and kind of fade it as we get over here and we'll let this be dark against the light background. All right, and I'm gonna use this as uh, my base color. It does make sense, literally writing it down. Yeah, that, that feels like about as clear as I've ever been able to make that. I might clip this and or edit it down or something. What time in the video is it? 2.05? Yeah, we're two hours in. I'm going to make myself a note. <laughs> I'm going to make myself a note to go uh, see if this is coherent. All right, my explanation took all the time up that I was gonna start on this page, but uh, we can do a little bit before we get going here. It's always great when you're on the second page in a, in a scene because you've already, you've already figured out everything you need to figure out. At least for the color palette. <laughs> you still got to figure out the rest of the page. And on this, uh, I think I want to keep her... Uh, She'll stay mostly dark, I think. So I'm going to try to light this background, I think, for this. I think that's the way I want to go. And then all of this actually, what do I want to do here? We could go, 
I don't really want to use this color here because I, well, you know what? Maybe I do. <laughs> don't listen to me. This brush is so good. I really like this brush. If you want to get this brush, it's not my brush. Um, oh, wait, is that? Yeah, well, well, that's the one I always use. Uh, that's the, the friend and brush. But I, it's actually, I meant to use this wash brush. I was like, that's not exactly what I wanted. This has got a little bit more texture to it. This is what I meant to say is an awesome brush from Krup, Krupuk, 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 I don't know how to say that name. I think that'd be worth a video. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it would be too. We'll see. I've already. I should I should do like one video, and have it like each chapter is like another weird ass analogy that I've. <laughs> you know, we had the Sudoku analogy. We've got the rubber band analogy. <laughs> I'm just. I'm trying to make this a simpler. Uh, I think I want to push this uh, back. I'm just going to put a clipping mask on the inks for that. And uh, use the wrong brush. There we go. Again, just so there's, we create space between, uh, between him and the wall behind him. I might actually do a little bit of that through here also. Don't like that as much. Yeah. And I did, I did give, uh, I gave Fresco a shot the other night before a stream. Uh, to see if I could do it, use it on this book. I said this on the stream earlier, but uh, it's just too slow. Like this is like compared to Clip Studio with keyboard and shortcuts, it's just not. It's not even close. It is really not even close. Wrong layer. Too many panels selected. Hold on. Didn't I undo that? There we go. So I'm selecting all the background to put this into action. And uh, I'm starting again. We're just we're kind of drifting around. All right, this isn't uh, doing anything crazy. It's not very far from the background. I just need some brighter colors around these inks. Right, these heavy black inks are making choices for us. That's why I like coloring them so much. <laughs> like these characters, the values are mostly dark, so that dictates, in my opinion, that everything around them should be a little bit lighter. 
And uh, let's see, these, let me move this over. These columns are going to go a little bit darker, but not much. I'm just going to kind of let that fade because he did. Again, picking from my existing colors that are already on the canvas. Slightly, slightly lighter where the characters are. The cable piece on Fresco was awesome. I guess the software is too new to do entire books. You you could totally work with it, like you really could. I, I I am a bad example for this software because I have like such a very polished, <laughs> highly efficient, uh, not coloring. I mean like technically what's happening, like you know grabbing selections very very quickly and never have to go over here very often unless you know I've got to change something. I've spent so much time just right here on the canvas. And on the iPad, not having the keyboard and not having uh, that speed is, is just, uh, it makes for a big difference. Too big of a difference for me. <laughs> For the darker values on this page, they're they're kind of a desaturated bluish purple color. And uh, I'm gonna actually throw them around a little bit on here. They're really not even particularly purple. They just appear purple because everything else on this thing is so blue. <laughs> And then his whiteboard, I'm going to just brighten it a little bit. And we're going to say these are blueprints, maybe? They kind of look like it. So can we just saturate them? Yeah, we're just going to saturate those a little bit. I don't, again, I don't want it to come forward too much. I don't want it to be too insane, but I just wanted this is all this this whole scene is all very subtle. <laughs> it's very very subtle. I wonder if it's any different on desktop. I don't know. Like a really angry man in my comments, which is pretty rare for me. He deleted it, uh, like, within three minutes of posting it. I happen to have my phone in front of me, and I get notifications for every comment. I, I'm not able to answer all of them, but I try to get most of them. At least a like or a thank you or something. And this this guy was like, who in the world is this even for? Like, the, 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 I tried the desktop app, and it's garbage, and now why are you even showing this? Why are like, just, just come on, man. Like, this is for the people that want to try Fresca. <laughs> Which is not you, <laughs> apparently. Are these post it notes? Yeah.
but yeah, it was. So I don't know. I, I say that because I don't know if the Windows version is any good, or if he's just. He might just be very angry. Tell you what, you got a good start. This one won't take much longer, but I am out of steam for today. So, you guys have any questions before we uh, wrap this up about anything? Thank you for your watching. Thank you for your support. Click like, click subscribe, comment. What else? There's a thanks button now. You can. I got a. I got a comment the other day that had a tip with it. I'm like, we need more of that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But there's a lot of buttons. Just click a button. Helps me out. But yeah, I'll, I'll hang out for a few seconds, see if anybody has any questions. And uh, if not, have a good night. Very ed educational stream. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for watching, man. Thank you for being a member. We got a, we got a member heavy chat tonight. Thank you. Members and uh, uh, patrons, I do a, a, a live class every month. Uh, I go over your work, we'll give you critiques if you want it. You don't have to. And uh, you get in my Discord. We just a uh, bunch of color and nerds, you know. Thank you for coming by, GLH. Appreciate it. I'll keep my questions to the end of the stream next time. Oh, no problem. No problem. No problem at all. What color are skin tones? Yes. <laughs> They're uh, desaturated purple and gray, obviously. I'm really happy with how this book's turning out. I gotta say. Working with man is a ton of fun. And none of these pages miss. Like, every panel is... Every frame of painting, as they say. Alright, I don't see any other questions, guys. Thank you all again for coming. Uh, also looking forward to the skin tone video you said you were planning. Yeah, I've been planning that one for a while. I started it, and then... I don't remember what happened. I'll have to figure out what happened. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for coming, guys. See you all next time.